Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Marie McCready's and I have the great pleasure to chair today's session on industry on clinical trials in South Australia. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on uh, Ghana land and the Ghana people as the traditional owners and custodians of the land and their special cultural and spiritual relationship with the land. Uh, I acknowledge elders past, present and emerging uh, and of course, any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders that may be with us today. Uh, as we go on, can I please encourage you to type your questions in the question and answer box um, in your Zoom window um, so that, that I may be able to ask the questions at the uh, end of the webinar after each speaker. The session is being recorded and will be available on the ABMC uh, website. Uh, shortly. Uh, our first presentation today will be by Zoe Harrison, uh, who is the Chief Business Development Officer at CMAX, and will present a tour of the CMAX clinical research. Thanks very much, Zoe. Hi, thank you, Maria. Um, and actually, I'm visiting, uh, uh, speaking from Melbourne today, so I would also like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people um, who are the tr traditional owners of the land here and pay my respects to, to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, so, and also thank you to Adelaide Biomed, Biomed City for um, the opportunity to share a little bit of information about CMAX. I do have some slides that I'll quickly run through. Um, I'm not sure how many people have had an opportunity to come and visit CMAX Clinical Research, um, where the, the big building office at the Adelaide Biomed City and SAMRI and the Royal Adelaide um, Hospital and, um, and actually we've got a new building, but many of you may not have had the opportunity to, to come and visit us uh, directly. So I'll, I'll uh, sort of charge on through the slides and I look forward to your questions at the end. Um, so many people may not realise that, that CMAX was actually the first established early phase clinical research unit in Australia. We've got a really long history of working in this space. Um, and we were the first place in Australia to conduct a first time in human healthy volunteer study way back in 1999. But actually we've been in operation for over 28 years now. Um, and our CEO Jane has been with, with CMAX all that time. Um, we've had a couple of changes of owners, but we're currently owned by a Japanese company called IROM Group, and we're very fortunate. They, they essentially let us run as a standalone business, but they've been able to help us invest for the long term, which is why we have a lovely new um, facility opposite the Royal Adelaide Hospital there, and we're continuously able to expand that. And so we're, we're going through an expansion phase at, at the moment. Um, we originally started over at the old Royal Adelaide Hospital in, a, in an old ward, <laughs> unused ward, and now we've been able to purpose build a, a very modern unit and, and it really is world class. So um, I, this, this slide here is just a little bit of information about what we, what we look like on the inside if you haven't had an opportunity to visit us. So it is purpose built. It is essentially a miniature hospital style um, clinic. We have 66 beds at the moment, but we're currently pushing out for more beds and will be 78 beds in, in a matter of weeks. And the clinic operates 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, and we, we, we house people for anywhere from six hours up to one month. We've had, we hope we've had volunteers come and stay with us for, for more than a month, actually. Um, so we have to be very flexible. We also have a separate screening and outpatient center. That's the new building on North Terrace. And what we're in the process of building is some really specialised rooms for different types of studies that we're running. So we've got a low acoustic area where we collect a lot of, say, EEG data. Um, we've got some negative air pressure isolation suites now being built as well. They'll come online in, in, uh, in a few weeks. Um, really great for nebulised dosing, dr drug administration, for GMO drug administration, and of course, for infection control, which is clearly very important at the moment. And so the other sort of features of our unit are fairly typical of a phase one unit that you would see around the world. Um, and they include, um, you know, uh, emergency call bells, emergency crash carts. We've got piped and portable oxygen and suction throughout the unit. 
Um, we have cardiac telemetry monitoring equipment and a, a very large stock of uh, supply of equipment. We have three on-site sample processing laboratories. So we collect intensive PK samples and um, those are processed and shipped all over the world pretty much every single day. We have PC2 certification, which means that we can run GMO clinical trials or gene therapy clinical trials. We have a database of around 40,000 healthy uh, volunteers. They're not all healthy volunteers. We have different patient groups and elderly and, um, uh, and a wide demographic, uh, range of demographics within our database. And we utilize the imaging services within the precinct all the time. In terms of the sort of work we do, um, it, we are very much a globally oriented company and we conduct contracted clinical research for the biopharmaceutical industry. So, so over 90% of our work is completed for international sponsors and, and the majority of it would be for US based sponsors, uh, particularly small biotech companies who might be say based in um, San Francisco or Boston, which are two pretty big biotech clusters. But we're also getting a lot of work from Korean companies and Chinese companies, Taiwanese as well. And then, um, pleasingly, we're seeing a little bit more work out of Australia as well. So um, the Australian biotech market isn't massive, but it is slowly growing, which is was really exciting. And it is a competitive space. So we are um, what sponsor, international sponsors are looking for is speed, quality, and cost competitiveness. And so that is something that Australia offers. And it is also something that CMAX offers and that we are, you know, constantly um, working to make sure that we can maintain those three competitive advantages. And then we conduct around 40 to 50 studies a year. Um, we have around 300 staff, so it's growing all the time. Um, and sort of around 30 or 40 different sort of roles within CMAX will support that work. sorts of clinical trials that we run. So we, do, we don't have a particular therapeutic area that we work in, which is sort of really important to know. Our specialty is really the execution of these very complicated um, early phase protocols, usually phase one. We do work a little bit in phase two as well. Um, and we work in most molecule types that can be small or large, GMO, gene therapies, and most routes of administration. So on any given day, you will see that we are conducting oral dosing and subcut and intravenous um, administration and nebulized as I, as I mentioned before. And so traditionally we're known for that healthy volunteer sort of work. It's that um, first in human um, protocol. So we really bridge that gap from the, uh, the preclinical work in animals and then bring it into humans for the first time in a very safe and controlled environment. And we help sets, we, we collect safety data and we collect pharmacokinetic samples to really, so that the sponsors then can take that, that, that information and, trans, and move into their phase two program in, in patients. So it's, we see it's very important work. It's, it's very interesting. Um, we also do a lot of drug-drug interaction studies and lots of pharmacokinetic, um, so food effect, bioequivalence, bioavailability studies. We're also doing vaccine studies at all stages, um, at all phases. Um, and we do some fun proof of concept studies involving some pretty interesting um, pharmacodynamic markers. Uh, we are also working in early phase patient studies um, across most therapeutic areas. And really that is about, you know, if there is um, some complexity that needs a phase one unit to help execute it, we would work with investigators at the Royal Adelaide Hospital or anywhere within South Australia, really, who have an interest in that and have patients who, who want to enrol. One area that we're not currently offering is, is oncology in that space and, and we, at paediatric, we're not really that suitable for paediatric studies. We have also a new business arm that many people may not know about. It is uh, a smaller arm to our business. It's called Fusion Clinical Research. We're running later phase studies, uh, typically phase two and three studies, and that's GP-based work. Um, yeah, we've got nine general practices across, Ad across Adelaide and what we do there is we embed our study coordinators within those general practices um, to support GPs in conducting that work because they're very busy, they don't have time, the paperwork's very uh, cumbersome and we have all of our SOPs and procedures and, and um, support the GPs to complete the work. And what that means is that, you know, we can be contracted one single contract and then we can manage the study across multiple areas within the Adelaide region. 
And then we've also got a clinic that's dedicated to vaccine work in Norwood. Um, and um, yeah, so we're doing lots of COVID vaccines, flu vaccines, et cetera, through that model. So it's pretty exciting new arm type business, which is, is slowly growing. Now, I wanted to talk quickly about collaborations. Um, we, we, we are really fortunate to be able to draw on expertise with Adelaide Biomed City to complete our work. We have always really um, have been very fortunate that we've had a great relationship with Callan, the hospital, and we have master agreements with most of the institutions in, in the Adelaide Biomedical Precinct. Um, and we, we typically work very, very frequently with some of the groups that are listed on listed here, in particular, the, the fantastic Royal Adelaide um, Hospital Pharmacy. We work with Park Clinical Research and some really interesting sorts of projects. We, we, um, we procure a lot of services from the imaging um, capabilities here, at Benson's and Dr. Jones. Um, wide and SA pathology. And then we also have, you know, enjoy working with clinical trial groups within Callan who might need, say, phase one support. Um, and so I, on that, I guess I'm just putting some pictures up of <laughs> here. So it's a tour. I did promise a tour. So there's some pictures of, of the unit as it is now. Um, but on that, on this last page, there is um, some contact details. And you know, we, we always value the opportunity to collaborate with, with groups within Adelaide Biomed City, Biomed City. So please do just reach out with any questions. If you've got any ideas, we're very happy to hear from you. And um, I hope that uh, that gave you a little bit of, a, little bit of a, a flavor for what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zoe. That was um, really good and interesting and uh, great to hear about the new ventures as well. Um, uh, please uh, do put in any questions in the question and answer um, uh, area. Um, but while people are thinking about that, uh, Zoe, if I might, may able to ask a question really um, around the new business um, mm. and, and the extension to GPs and, and sort of the phase three type work. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because clearly that sort of decentralised approach has yeah. been something that we've all been looking at um, during COVID times as well. Yeah, absolutely. And decentralised trials is very interesting. Um, you know, we have quite a flexible approach to what we can achieve through that model. Uh, one of the Beyond vaccine studies, we're, we're really targeting high prevalence conditions that, or medium to high prevalence conditions that you would ordinarily treat in a primary care setting. Um, but, you know, we're also conducting, for example, a common cold study where we need people to, to present within 36 hours of symptom onset. And we really are using quite a few different tools for that study. So we're using e-consent um, to, to speed up that process. And then we're using... Um, a, participant diaries for um, collecting the symptom information. We're using an electronic source um, to get the data available very quickly. So it, it is sort of an example of how we can be quite flexible and get people in quite quickly. But another example would be um, uh, we have a sleep disturbance study at the moment. And on, for that study, which is lower slower recruitment, we've got that open and recruiting within three clinics within Adelaide um, and essentially our clinical research coordinator will move between those sites when they have the, the patient is expected to come in, um, the, the GP will help co consent and then the rest of the, the actual study conduct will be managed by our, by our team. Um, so it's exciting. Um, yeah, it is exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, are you also looking at flexible models where perhaps um, there's a collaboration in terms of the different organisations doing different aspects of the study. Absolutely. Oh, well, you have to these days. That's that yeah. seems to be and um, the, the way of the world. But absolutely, yeah, we um, have been speaking to a number of groups and um, look forward to collaborating with many more. Great. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, if there do doesn't seem to be any questions uh, arriving from the floor. Um, so we will move on to Melanie Gentko, who is the uh, director of the clinical research platform uh, at SAMRI, who's going to talk to us about moving the needle, improving clinical trials for SAMRI and the AHIP partners. Thanks very much, Melanie.
Excellent. Thanks, Maria. And, and thanks, Zoe, for a, a great presentation. And uh, I'm also speaking to you today from the lands of the Ghana people and similarly pay my respects to um, their elders and anybody um, else of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent who is with us today. Um, so firstly, I'm one of those many people that have worked with CMAX over the period and, and what an exciting model of clinical trial excellence CMAX is for South Australia. And as a preface to my presentation today, I think it's important to recognise that as a state, there is certainly a lot of emphasis on our capability and our um, ability to really grow our sector and continue to attract the investment that we particularly saw um, as a result of COVID, but that was really starting to grow well before that, um, uh, before we saw um, a, an increase in interest in, in clinical trials across Australia more broadly, but also in South Australia. Um, and the work that we're doing within SAMRI and as part of the clinical trials platform is really meant to try and drive some of that clinical trials efficiency and excellence and um, promote industry investment, but also um, excellence in our investigator-led trial sector. So let me just make sure I can advance. Here we go. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today um, around the clinical trials platform, what it is, um, and what our priorities are. So the clinical trials platform, in essence, um, is designed, as I mentioned, to improve the way that we think about and work um, across the um, partners of the Adelaide Health Innovation um, Partnership, which include SAMRI, the University of Adelaide and Carlin. But it also um, is something that we've been working on um, primarily within SAMRI. Um, as part of our relationship with those other organisations, we are looking to, um, to deploy a number of strategies to improve the way that we think about and perform clinical trials but whilst we wait for some of those um, projects to really kick in, we are making um, incredible strides here within SAMRI um, for the way that we practice and, uh, and think about clinical trials. So as part of the platform, we've identified four priority areas, as you can see on the screen, and there are seven key projects that we are looking at. Um, priority area one is around quality and excellence, and I'll talk to you a bit more um, about what we've managed to achieve and the areas that we're working on under that priority area. Prior, priority area two is around innovation. Priority area three is around equity of access and priority area four around an enabled future workforce. So what does all of that mean? So from a quality perspective, there's a number of different areas that we are working on. And again, I just want to reiterate that this is really a reflection on what we've been doing locally within SAMRI, um, but with it, it always at the front of mind that whatever we do locally um, has to have um, applicability to our partners, not only across the Adelaide Health Innovation Partnership, but also more broadly across South Australia. So what we've been doing um, internally within SAMRI is we've done a bit of a restructure of our clinical research team. We've appointed a quality manager and we're currently doing a, or, or about to commence a gap analysis around um, the creation of our quality management system. So that's really about assessing what do we already have in place? What are some of our um, needs? And then starting to actually um, work to build that quality management system um, in response to a changing regulatory environment. So we're going to be doing that on an existing ISO 9001 platform that um, is already operational within SAMRI, but gives us the capability to be able to link into our partners in the future um, as we continue to develop the model. We've also developed an internal project monitoring model where we can look at existing research projects and uh, manage them in relation to risk and also in quality. And we are at the very early stage of scoping a cost and budgeting tool, which will be an accessible free online resource. And this is really building on um, the work that IPA, the Independent Hospital Pricing Authority, um, had in place uh, around a clinical trials costing tool that sadly hasn't been updated since 2015. And so costing clinical trials 
for both industry and investigator-led um, projects is very problematic. The other area um, that we're working on as part of the platform is around innovation. And this talks to some of the things that Chloe mentioned and that Maria mentioned as well. So decentralised trials are obviously of interest to the sector more broadly, both internationally and here in Australia. But one of the challenges that we have locally is because our data systems aren't typically very well connected yet, we can't really deploy a fully um, expansive decentralised clinical trial model. So one of the things that we're looking at locally is how do we employ bits of a decentralised model that will help us to reach underserved populations, but also enable us to embrace the innovation that is really important when we have a future focused lens on clinical trials. So locally, we have deployed an e-consent model via a third party vendor, and um, we have an agreement that we can um, roll out to any of our partners to ensure that they get some uh, cost efficiencies. Um, we are partnering with external uh, recruitment support vendors to assist with um, new technologies in recruitment, such as the application of um, AI. We are building a participant registration portal um, called Involved, and I'll talk about that in, in a little moment at the end of the session. And we're also looking at building a clinical trials resources hub, and again, I'll talk about that at the end. We've also just recently um, employed a dedicated marketing and digital, digital communication um, staff member who's already um, leaping ahead with helping our teams in clinical trials right across the organisation, including across um, the University of Adelaide, um, which is really helping our, um, our clinical trials teams to understand how to look at recruitment with a new lens. So in regards to equity of access, and again, this talks to um, some of the areas that um, Zoe was talking about, particularly around the primary healthcare settings. And one of the discussions that we're having um, is with CMAX, and we're, uh, we're about to kick off our first discussion um, in coming weeks to look at how we can leverage um, their model um, to be able to take more clinical trials out into the primary healthcare setting and we have discussions with other um, service providers in this area as well. But really this equity of access um, model is about how do we use innovation to um, reach underserved populations and how can we support other work that is happening in the sector, including um, work um, that's being led by groups like HTSA and SA Health um, through the MRFS funding for the Rural, Regional and Remote Clinical Trials Project. And our final area um, where we are making some really strong progress is around the enabled future workforce. And it won't be news to many people on today's session that um, finding um, staff and retaining staff in the clinical trial sector is highly problematic currently. So we're looking at ways that we can improve our education and training. We've done a number of things locally, such as um, creating a very bespoke venipuncture training model. We have our talking trials webinar series and the next session of that is um, Thursday where we'll be looking at quality in clinical trials. Um, and we've also been um, included in a nationally funded NTP Connect Ready project where we will place some clinical trial coordinators as interns across SA in 2023. And I know we're running out of time, but um, this is our involved concept where we are looking at building a community of participation um, in, within SAMRI that again um, can be extended to our partners. And we're doing this in a way that will really encourage um, people to want to be part of the SAMRI community. What you're seeing on screen there is um, our concept stage, which is currently being worked up. And this is our resources hub where we have, and it's been modelled on the Clinical Trials New South, New South Wales online hub, where we will provide access to resources and tools for the clinical research sector, not just within SAMRI, but also more broadly across South Australia. So that is it for me, and I will stop sharing. And back to you, Maria. Thanks very much, Melanie. Clearly big pieces of work. Um, questions for Melanie, I encourage you to put them in the question and answer session. But uh, while people are doing that, um, I guess the issue around workforce is clearly a big one, especially when there's lots of 
uh, teams doing clinical trials with uh, uh, staff in different places on short-term contracts. Uh, how, how do you see that we might be able to solve that as a state? Yeah, look, good question, Maria, and uh, I wish there was an easy answer. Yeah. I guess, you know, one of the things that we are exploring locally, um, and obviously you're, you're familiar with this model, Maria, is um, um, a model uh, between partners like the University of Adelaide where you know, we're exploring a memorandum of understanding. So we can manage that shift in resources when there are changes in demand. And that's particularly important in the investigator initiated trial sector. Um, and we wanna capitalize on being able to retain those staff and minimize disruption and breaks in contracts. Um, and, you know, to be able to, to build that sort of model across the state would be highly advantageous. I guess it's, a, it's a, um, a, a vision for the future, but one that we should absolutely keep our eye on. Mm. Yes, thank you. Um, and, and some commentary about, you know, the, the work that, you know, you've presented today and the relationship with a one-stop shop uh, initiative from um, the federal government. Yeah, look, I, I think... Um, most people who are familiar with the one-stop shop um, uh, concept would support that it's something that Australia um, really needs. Um, we're still gathering information about what that might look like um, and what we're doing locally is making sure that we can um, build what we need as a state and particularly across our partners, but without overlap around what we know of that existing concept. Um, and also whatever we build can be linked into um, the, the, the clinical trials front door, which is where they will connect parts of the Australian ecosystem, um, which will be important going forward because we need to have a place where we can talk to the rest of Australia and also to the rest of the world about our capabilities. Well, if there are no other questions, I think we've um, had a quite a tour de force um, from both uh, Zoe and Melanie uh, about the bright future of clinical trials in South Australia and uh, the important need for collaboration uh, and all the partners working together academically, industry um, and the health sector. So thank you all very much for joining today um, and I look forward to any feedback. And if you do have any feedback, you can just enter it in the Q&A function um, in the next few minutes or, or through the ABMC uh, website later. So thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you. Thank Bye you, now. Maria. Bye. See ya.